All right, so here I'm going to be uh, doing a character design um, of a wolf, and um, my 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 technique on this one, if you can see, I'm going to be drawing on a chipboard. Uh, we're using colored pencil to really bring out the form. Uh, but first, I want to talk about character. Um, it's character design is is not so much about shape play um, as it is about designing who who the character is, not just the what. The what is it's a wolf. Um, the who though is the personality and trying to bring that out um, within the design. That's the task that a, a true character designer has to accomplish. Um, so if you see here, I'm, I have a few uh, thumbnail sketches I had done before starting this demo. Two real quick roughs to figure out um, what kind of personality I wanted to give to this wolf character. Um, because once again, it's a lot about who the character is and not the what. So I, I, that's one thing I'm always trying to address in my work is personality. Um, I want people to get to know uh, who my character is and um, or the director to really want something more. Because um, story, uh, character is a lot about story. And it's something a lot of people need to learn how to in inject into their designs. Um, at this point... I've already figured out who, who the character is in my little thumbnail roughs. Um, so I'm just actually trying to render it out on the chipboard. Um, I'm laying it in with a quick, uh, just some quick pencil, graphite pencil lines. And I'm going to go in with colored pencil when I've laid in uh, the, the basic form. But I'm, all th I'm thinking about posing um, at this point because it's all about personality. And you really bring out the personality uh, of a character in the pose. You should really think about expression not just being facial, but uh, body. And actually, facial expression is just a reinforcement of the body, uh, sometimes in terms of telling about who that character is. So when I first start to lay in the character, um, I'm all, I'm, I am thinking about posing. Um, if I feel the pose is too stiff, doesn't feel alive, I'll start over. Um, and you never want to settle. If it's not working, start over. Don't just do something just to get it done. Um, you want to make it work and be satisfied with it. Um, so after I've actually kind of figured out who it is, I start laying in the, in the, in the pose and the body and start bringing that personality out. Um, I start to actually apply some more design mechanics. Um, I start to work a little bit more with shape play. Um, and one thing you want to avoid is you want to avoid being redundant in your volumes. You avoid volume redundancy. Um, so find an overall shape that dominates uh, the design. And uh, be careful not to get any parallels. Be careful to not have the shapes uh, uh, compete with one another. So if you see here, there's an actual, like an overall, uh, almost like a bullet uh, shape, a bent bullet shape uh, to, to, the, to the design. And I started laying in the mane. Uh, I want the mane to be a big part of the wolf. I'm um, really pushing that idea um, and, and not making just a very generic wolf that we've seen a million times in like every Disney movie. After I've figured out what the overall shape is, um, I start to really start to bring in some straights and curves. Uh, a sense of good design um, has a nice has a nice feeling of straights and straights against curves. And you know, it's up to the artist what kind of style they want to design in. Um, mine is usually about energy uh, and personality, but I really like to play off with straights and curves. And um, you know, a a very uh, uh, graceful uh, drawing has a lot of has has a lot of curves. Uh, but if there are no straights, it ends up being sausagey. Um, a very strong drawing, um, like something that's constructed very well, has a lot of straights, but it feels very dead and stiff. Um, a good drawing, a good design, has a nice blend of both. And it's up to you as the artist to find out that blend. Um, if you notice also, as, as I continue to, to uh, fill out the, the, the design here, I'm actually just laying in some marker as a general uh, local tone for the, uh, for the wolf. Um, Dealing with composition again. Um, notice how the tail, uh, with the wolf sitting down, leads you back up into his, into the form by going through the f those front forelimbs. That's something I really try. 
uh, character design, like I said, is about story. Um, it's about a good sense of design, uh, uh, dynamics, and it's about composition. You want to, tr want to try to lead the, the viewer's eye around the page. Um, you can do that with line, you can do it with lighting. Um, there's several different ways to approach it. But you want to keep the viewer intrigued and um, interact with them in, in your drawing. And doing that uh, through line composition, uh, is, is, as I'm doing it here, is a good way to go. You notice also, um, you know, everyone's probably wondering, oh, I can't really see the face yet. I usually leave that uh, till, till the end. Uh, as you've seen, if you've ever seen any of my other demos on animal drawing, um, you see I always leave the face to the end. Um, I feel that's, that it's really the, the, the money shot um, is at the end is dealing with the eyes and um, you know, dealing with that final uh, expression of the face. Making sure the pose is working to tell the story and um, also if that's working, then I get to move on into a working on the face at the end um, to reinforce what the body is telling about the about the character. If you see right there, I just flipped, I just flipped uh, the drawing over, upside down. Um, that lets me know if the composition is working um, and if I like the way the shape is looking. Uh, flipping your drawings actually really helps to point out any anything any problem areas. Uh, almost like a reduction glass when you're painting, it's the same idea. Um, so it's just a quick way to check. So the technique I'm using here, as I, as I mentioned uh, first off, was I'm um, using chipboard and colored pencil on chipboard. Um, it's really nice because the chipboard, that tone it has, it acts as like a keyed canvas. Like it's almost already a wash. And then it's just a matter of, of, of adding some darks and lights. You can really bring out the form. Um, that way you don't have to worry if it's not like starting out with a blank white piece of paper. So it, it, as I, I, when I'm laying it in, something like this, you saw I laid in first with the graphite pencil and then start to add color. Um, because the Prismacolor won't erase so easily on this, so I lay in my lines very, very lightly at first. Um, then I build up from there. And, and allow, I allow the canvas to show through on certain areas. I don't build up too much. Um, I use the canvas as, as part of the, of the drawing. Um, canvas and this being, being the chipboard. So uh, as I start winding down towards the end, towards finishing off the design, I start locking in a lot of the details, um, bring some highlights into the eyes, um, uh, really bringing out the, the areas I want, I want the audience to focus on, which for me is usually the face. Um, after the, the design has a nice readability, um, I want to really I draw the viewer into the eyes and that face, bring that personality. Uh, this one is just a very happy uh, wolf. Um, and I, I, once again, I want the audience to think about, like, what's he looking at? What's he so excited about? So in the pose and the, ex and the facial expression um, really creates more interest in the design and brings a lot of character to your character design, which is so important, which a lot of people uh, don't realize. Uh, as I mentioned early on um, in, this, in this demo, that it's more than just about shape play. It's a lot about who the character is and not just the what. I mean, um, a one, uh, another trick to really help uh, draw the viewer in and where I want the audience to look or the director to look, um, I talked about composition, um, but it's also about the highest area of contrast. So if you notice, uh, the face is kind of a white or like a high value, and uh, it's surrounded by a darker mane. Now, the mane is not necessarily the darkest point in the body, but because it has the highest contrast with the light face and the dark hair around it, um, it really draws the eye in and that's where the audience will look.